Dr. Holliday, let me begin with you. And since I only have five minutes, I'm going to ask short questions, and let me see if I can elicit some short answers. You're a former president of the Chief State School Officers, right? And for the last 30 years or so, you've been working together to develop uh, the Chief State School Officers to develop standards, um, tests, accountability systems. Is, am I correct about that? Yes, sir. And you said in your testimony that you don't you don't think Washington should. Well, let me ask you this: Do do you favor if you were reauthorizing No Child Left Behind? Do you favor keeping the 17 federal tests? Uh, yes, sir. The chiefs uh, favor annual assessment, but there are different ways you can get at annual assessment. We we support annual assessment with some innovation ability to look differently at something other than just an annual multiple yeah. choice test. Do you favor the disaggregation of the results? Absolutely, sir. So you favor that. Then we get to the question, uh, which is sometimes contentious, about who decides whether a school or a teacher is succeeding or failing and what are the consequences of that. We call that the accountability system. Now, Kentucky, I gather, has its own accountability system. Yes, we were able to be a little creative with the waiver, but now we're getting a little micromanagement with the waiver. Yeah, and do do what, what would you say to those people that if we have the who, who believe that if we have the federal tests and if we disaggregate the results, so we can't trust Kentucky or other states to come up with their own ways to to decide whether a school or a teacher is succeeding or failing and what the consequences should be. Some people say that would be moving backwards. Uh, they're definitely stuck in the 80s because uh, the chiefs now, if you look at the work in the last five to ten years, you see dramatic change in responsibility and accountability from the chiefs. And don't forget, I serve on the NAGBI board, and every two years you get the truth. Uh, so states might be able to Which hide. Which is the National years. Assessment of... That's right, National Assessment of Educational Progress. You get a state-by-state -state ranking. You get the breakouts by the demographics. It's a treasure trove of data to hold states accountable. Ken Kentucky began some time ago its work on teacher effectiveness. Uh, <laughs> why do you not think that the, that, that the U.S. Department of Education should approve, or do you think it should approve what you do about mm -hmm. teacher effectiveness in Kentucky? Uh, always with the issue of guiding principles becoming uh, micromanagement. Uh, we worked for three years to get a matrix system at our unions and had buy-in from everybody. We send the waiver in and one cell and one little page, oh, we're not going to approve your waiver again if you don't fix that. Uh, that's micromanagement and that's what the chiefs are very much against. And it usually happens when you move from general principles to actually uh, monitoring and uh, overseeing the waivers. Uh, Ms. Ms. Moore, um, in April, Washington State's waiver was revoked by Secretary Duncan because that state legislature wouldn't pass legislation requiring standardized test results to be used in teacher principal evaluation systems. Instead, the law in Washington allows local school districts to decide which tests they use. Now, you're a proud member of the National Education Association. What would you say to those who say that if we just turn it all back to Washington, that the teachers union will stop uh, good teacher evaluation systems in your school district or in your, your state? Thank you. Um, well, I believe, I mean, we definitely need uh, measures to indicate student growth and to identify gaps and to make sure that there are, is accountability. But from my own experience, I know that there's a number of other indicators that can be used beyond just testing. Um, I know what my expectations are in order to make sure that a first grader is prepared to go on into second grade successfully mm -hmm. and so forth. I would also say that... Um, but if I may interrupt, who do you think should be making those decisions? Do you think those should be made here? Or do you think Washington State or Tennessee or Texas or Kentucky should be developing its own standards for whether teachers are succeeding or failing and what the consequences are? Sure. Um, I guess I believe in the ground up idea that we're really listening to teachers' voices and that it should be a more personalized uh, system where teachers have some buy-in in that. Uh, we should be able to trust the system and believe in it. Um, knowing that it's part of a larger professional growth system. Um, we're the, as teachers, we're pro professional, we're committed to this work. We want to grow and we want our students to learn. So I would argue that um, teachers should have some say in that and that it should be knowing the students in the, in the area that you're teaching in. Thank you very much. Mr. Hinojosa, my time is up, but I simply want to underscore and thank you for your comments about 
uh, the teacher incentive fund, which Secretary Spellings recommended, and Secretary uh, um, uh, Arne Duncan has strongly endorsed, and which uh, is an important way, I believe, in, uh, to, to help uh, local school districts come up with their own ways of, of evaluating uh, teachers and, and relating student achievement to teacher performance. Uh, Senator Murray.